Hiya foodie folks and welcome to Michael's Eats. Hope you guys are enjoying all the content I've been producing. Today's video, meatloaf. One of my all time home style favorites. Now my mom made meatloaf, but uh, I definitely changed her recipe more to my liking and actually my kids liking as well. So why don't you guys go ahead and grab a snack and a beverage and let's get started. All right, foodie folks, we have ground beef. Now, I don't grind my own meat for uh, for meatloaf. Typically, I go to the butcher, I buy ground beef that was ground that day. This is about three pounds. It's 80-20. Now, I also let it sit out for about half hour so it's not ice cold when I put my hands in it because your hands are the best mixing instruments you have. Now this meatloaf is probably good for four or five people or one or two people with leftover surf sandwiches. Mmm, meatloaf sandwich. All right, what else? We have two eggs. Uh, guys, just in case you don't know, these cups, I call them deli cups because I'm from Jersey and that's how we roll here. You can buy them on Amazon or you can buy stuff at delis and save them and wash them, whatever you want. Uh, I have about a cup and a half of panko breadcrumbs. Why panko? because that's what I use in the house. We have one whole onion chopped fine. This happens to be a sweet onion because I like sweet onion. We have about, I don't know, four cloves of garlic. Let's get all that garlic in there. Then we have uh, about a tablespoon of Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. And then this is something special. This is bulldog sauce, which is a uh, tonkatsu sauce is from Japan. Um, it's a meat, I'll show you. This is tonkatsu sauce. And uh, it's the brand is Bulldog. It's the most popular brand. It's kind of like Heinz here in the United States, at least the East Coast as the most popular brand. And uh, use it for tonkatsu, which is a crispy pork dish. I'll be doing a recipe on that maybe in the future as well. So, all right, what else? Fresh cracked ground pepper. I don't know, tablespoon. Half a tablespoon, I don't know, whatever you want. A dab of barbecue sauce. I don't know, quarter cup maybe. And uh, this is Sticky Fingers Carolina Sweet. That's what I like. And then about a cup of tomato ketchup. I like Heinz, of course. And then, now, now we got our spices. We have uh, cumin, which I love. About a tablespoon. And then, I don't know, a pinch of salt. Now, here we go. This is the best part. First thing we do is take off the watch, which we should have done before. Make sure your hands are clean and then just get in there and oh, mush it all up. Now, this isn't like hamburgers where you don't really want to, you know, ground up or, or, or uh, mix the meat too much. Obviously, you don't want to overbeat your meat. <laughs> uh, but this one, you really want to get everything incorporated nice. So I like to use the squish and twist method. This is what I call the squish and twist method. Now, the problem, not problem, but the issue could be if you have little kids, they might not like the chunks of onions. So uh, you're either gonna have to chop them really, really fine or tell them to deal with it. Uh, that's what I tell my eight-year-old Lucas. I chop them fine, but you know, there's some pieces in here that you're gonna see. And if he sees it, deal with it. Take it out, eat it, don't complain about it. All right, like this piece. This piece is actually too big, it's going in the garbage. All right, now, I'm gonna go wash my hands, stand by. Okay, now, we have our Pyrex dish. It's the standard, I think it's 11 by nine Pyrex dish. And uh, basically you wanna take your meat, put it on your pan and form it into a loaf. Now, I like to make the ends flat because the end is my favorite part. Also, if you're planning on making sandwiches, make it the same width as your bread, maybe a little wider. It is gonna shrink a little bit in the, uh, in the oven. Okay. I think that's good. Now, here's where the magic happens. We gotta baste it. I like to use a little barbecue sauce, a little ketchup, a little brown sugar. Okay, I take about a tablespoon of brown sugar, uh, half a cup of ketchup, 
almost a cup of uh, barbecue sauce. Mix it up nicey nice. This will make it a nice glaze. You can also heat this up in a pan and use it as a sauce over the barbecue, but I mean over the uh, meatloaf, but yeah. So you brush it on. You gotta make sure it's on every square inch of the meatloaf. By the way, this uh, pan has been sprayed with nonstick cooking spray. It just makes cleanup easier. The meatloaf isn't gonna stick, but this mixture will stick and uh, just becomes easier to clean it up. Again, you gotta get the ends here because that's the good part. Now, you may be saying to yourself, but Mike, there's so much left over. That's because we're gonna base it halfway through cooking as well. All right, foodie folks, we're gonna go ahead and put it in a 375 degree oven for about an hour or till the internal temperature reaches 160 degrees. Now, if you're new to cooking, you definitely should get an instant read thermometer. This is what I use, and this is what my son, who's 17, who loves to cook, use. It's a Thermapro, it, you know, the probe comes out like this, um, and it's InstaRead, so you put it in, boom, it reads. There's other kind of probes where you put them in and they, you can put them in the oven and they read as the temperature is cooking, but um, I highly recommend getting one of these. They're always on sale on Amazon. I'll put a link down below. But uh, if you don't have one in your kitchen, good thing to have to read temperatures and, and check doneness uh, of certain meats. So I'm gonna throw it in the oven. I'm gonna set a timer for half hour because I'm gonna baste it halfway through again with the barbecue sauce, ketchup, bar uh, brown sugar mixture, and, uh, and then we'll eat it. So stand by. Okay, foodie folks, we are back. The meatloaf has been in the oven for about a half an hour. You can see how delicious it looks. We got the juices forming. We got the uh, glaze on the top doing happy things. And then we're just gonna uh, put the rest of the glaze on. That was the timer that's reminding me to take the meat out after I've taken the meat out. So again, you wanna make sure you get all the sides, especially the ends, cause that's my favorite part and that's what I'm gonna eat first. Can't really have too much, I guess. All right, the meatloaf has been glazed again, double glazed after about half hour of cooking. We're gonna put it in for about another half hour and then we're gonna let it rest for about 20 minutes before we cut into it. So if you need to refill your snack and your beverage, stand by. Let's just take a minute to listen. All right, foodie folks, it's been about an hour and a half and the meatloaf is done. I'm gonna take my instant read thermometer, poke it, don't poke your meat too hard. Hopefully you can see, no, you can't see because it's not in frame. Now you can see about 180, that's because I'm pushing all the way into the other side. If we pull it back, it comes down to 164. Perfect. So now the trick is you gotta let it rest. If you cut it now, it's gonna be dry as all you know what and probably fall apart. We're gonna let it rest about 15 to 20 minutes and then cut it. All right, foodie folks, we've let it rest about 15 minutes. The smell is amazing. The dogs have been sitting underneath this thing hoping that I drop some and uh, no, I'm not going to because it's amazing. All right, take a serrated knife. This is just a serrated steak knife. I like my pieces about an inch thick. Of course, the end is my favorite part. Look at that, foodie folks. The end is the best part. This is hotter than you know what. Molten meatloaf, too hot to eat. Liar. I love the outside. It's really good stuff, folks. Great meal for nice cold winter days. You can make a big meatloaf, have it for dinner, have leftovers uh, the next day on a sandwich. You can eat it cold. So many things you can do with it. Hope you guys enjoyed the meatloaf video. I enjoy it because it's delicious. Go ahead and eat some more.
Let me know in the comments down below if you go ahead and make this, uh, this recipe and what you think. Have a great day. All right, foodie folks. First, we have ground beef. Now, I don't grind my own beef. Yeah, that's that's nice. That's that was my watch. Okay. <clears throat> uh, you can buy it on um. I forgot the garlic. Can who? What am I talking about? All right, we are gonna cook it until an internal of 160 in a 375 degree oven. It's gonna be about an hour. I don't typically temp it, but if you're really not sure or new to cooking, you should definitely get an Instaread thermometer. Um, and uh, yeah. There it is. All right, foodie folks. Yeah, it's, everything's shaking. 